On this episode of 108, we're at the Sergeant Gary Morales Training Complex with the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office SWAT team. Don't go away. 108 starts right now. Welcome to 10-8. I'm your host, Captain Brian Hester, and today we're at the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office Sergeant Gary Morales Training Complex. Today our guest is Lieutenant Scott Wells, who is a SWAT team commander for the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office. Welcome, Scott. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about the SWAT team. Uh, how many members do you have uh, and um, your job as a SWAT team commander? Well, the team consists of 29 deputies. Uh, we're what's known as a part-time team, which means those 29 deputies are pulled from all different areas within the sheriff's office. Uh, in the event they're needed for some kind of situation, then they are released from wherever they're working and they would respond and help us handle whatever critical incident that we're dealing with. Uh, my role as a team commander is to manage the overall operations. I'm responsible for the training and if we have a call out to actually uh, be incident command for that scene these members of the SWAT team, they could work anywhere within uh, the sheriff's office, is that correct? Correct. We have, we have some that are detectives, we have some in school resource, patrol, uh, all the different units uh, they come from. Okay. And you guys all train together, and I know we're going to talk about uh, training a little bit later in the show, but you guys all get together uh, every month and you do your training as well? Yes, we have uh, 26, a minimum of 26 training days a year. and. Uh, the whole team assembles at a pre-designated location. A lot of times it's here at the range. It could be another location. We train in the schools. We also train in some of the other large commercial structures. And, you know, we train as a team, train as a unit, and um, just whatever that particular training is for the day. And you said you've been with the team for 20 years now, is that correct? Yes, 20 years. How did you become the SWAT team commander? Well, I started out, I guess, at what you'd say the bottom, uh, just being a uh, utility guy that kind of the gopher whatever whatever needed to be done carry equipment drive a truck um, and then progressed up as my training advanced uh, became an entry team member uh, done breacher and then at one point I was uh, assigned as a team sniper and did that for many years and ultimately became the team leader of the sniper team and just so our viewers have an understanding you're the SWAT team commander but under you, you have team leaders that are in charge uh, of specific teams like you just mentioned, the sniper team. Explain um, how that setup works. So we have, the team is based, broken up into three different elements and each element has its own team leader and an assistant. So that allows us with that kind of leadership structure to really uh, delegate and it gets a lot of other people involved in the leadership roles. Uh, and a team that size, that's what you really need. You need other people that can take on different responsibilities and lead their, lead their units for whatever the mission is. You command the entire incident, and then you have team leaders in charge of smaller teams that sort of direct, uh, let's say, a task force on an operation to handle certain aspects of those operations as well, whether it be sniper or an entry into a residence or uh, whether it's grenadiers for gas, uh, teams and so forth, Yes, correct? that's correct. Okay. Now, we talked a little bit about how the team is set up and the makeup of the team. Tell our viewers um, a little bit about what it takes to be a SWAT team member because these are, if, um, you know, these are the elite of the elite, um, you know, training-wise and selection-wise. So tell our viewers a little bit about what it takes to become a SWAT team member. Well, they have to be a, a certified deputy with us meaning they've been through a law enforcement academy and they're actually working in law enforcement. Uh, they have to be off probation. Once they uh, have met those requirements, if they're interested in being on the team, then they go through a pretty rigorous selection process uh, to even be considered to be placed on the team. And that rigorous selection process, I understand that the start of that process is a physical fitness test and uh, that it's a very mentally as well as physically demanding uh, fitness test. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. When they come out here, we put them through a timed uh, physical agility test, which is very taxing. Um, it's uh, very, it can be very exhausting if you're not prepared for it. Uh, most of the ones that do try out are prepared. And uh, once they 
complete that first phase, which is the physical fitness uh, aspect of it, then we move on to other, other elements during the day. Is part of that physical uh, uh, test this obstacle course that we're sitting in the middle of? It is. After they get done doing what ends up being about a 40 minute to an hour workout, wow. uh, we then have them come. They have to c run through this obstacle course within a certain amount of time and successfully complete it to move on to the next phase. And uh, as a side note, I understand that the SWAT team actually built this obstacle course. They did, and I was here for that. We actually used some of our training time. Uh, some guys donated their own time uh, to come out here and construct this from scratch. And this is probably, too, it's my understanding, this is probably one of the uh, toughest obstacle courses in the state. Uh, that's what I've heard okay. from what I've seen, yes. Now, after the uh, physical test, uh, and then you mentioned they do some they do some actual uh, tests with their weaponry as well. Is that true? Yes, we put them through a shooting a shooting course just to make sure that they you know have a level of proficiency that we can build on and uh, you know make them even better in the future. We also put them through a chemical exposure, and that's because we work with chemical agents and we have to know that they're willing and able to you know function when they've had an exposure to CS or OC. And after all that, there's an interview. Yes. Okay. And we, we, they sit down with uh, us, the commander and the team leaders, and we ask them a series of questions just to test their fitness and their mental aptitude you know, for the position to see if you know, they, we think they have what it takes. So it is, it is quite a rigorous uh, selection process. And just um, so that all the people watching understand, why is it so important that that selection process um, be as intense as, as it is for a SWAT team? Because a lot of the situations that we have to deal with, uh, they're very mentally and physically taxing, and we really need people that are, like you mentioned before, the best of the best, that can really, that we know are gonna get in there and really stick it out till the, whatever the mission is, is accomplished. I wanna ask you a question. There's a program that you guys have, it's a SWAT medic program. Um, tell me just an overview of that SWAT medic program. Well, about three years ago, we partnered with the St. Lucie County Fire District uh, to basically put a program together where we would have a fire department uh, paramedics that would be embedded with our team. And it's not, not only are they embedded with our team, but they're actually part of the team. They go through the same training that all of our guys do. Uh, they actually have to be sworn law enforcement and they train with us just like the regular team members. In fact, you know, it's at a point now where the other, the other team members look at them just like they're part of the team, and that's really what you need because they're, they're the ones that are gonna go in a critical incident right there on the front lines um, in the hot zone with us. Lieutenant Wells, thank you for uh, that overview. When we return, we'll have Lieutenant Mike Ascani with the St. Louis County Fire District, who is one of our SWAT medics. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back. We're joined with Lieutenant Mike Ascani from the St. Lucie County Fire District, who is one of our SWAT medics. Welcome, Lieutenant Ascani. Thank you. This is an interesting relationship because you work for the St. Lucie County Fire District, and you are also an auxiliary St. Lucie County deputy. Is that correct? That's right. Because of that relationship, you're one of our SWAT medics. How many uh, SWAT medics does the Sheriff's Office SWAT team have? They have eight medics on the team right now. Eight medics. And how were those medics selected? Uh, it was actually a pretty rigorous process. Uh, they first asked who wanted, who was interested. Received uh, over 100 people, uh, medics from the fire department, actually requesting to try out for the team. Wow. Um, and then after that, they, uh, there was a physical uh, fitness test. There was uh, interviews and uh, some background checks. So you go through the same uh, selection process to be a medic as what Lieutenant Wells and I discussed as a selection process. So there's no difference. You're a SWAT team member and you do everything the same as the other SWAT team members. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Great. What made you want to be uh, become a SWAT team medic and be part of this program? Um, it was actually good timing when the uh, email came out asking for who was interested. I was actually just getting out of the Marine Corps. I spent 12 years uh, with the Marine Corps. So it was a good transition to me for me to actually keep staying active and actually doing things that I like to do. 
Thank you for your service. 12 years okay. with the Marine Corps. That's mm -hmm. awesome. And I guess that really helps to translate um, over into the SWAT team as well, some of the uh, tactical stuff and, I believe and being did. part of a team like that as well. Is that correct? Yeah. Now, aside from uh, the selection process that you, you guys went through and becoming a team member, I understand that you guys had other training uh, that it took to become an auxiliary uh, deputy with the sheriff's office. Tell us, uh, tell our viewers a little bit about that. Okay, so um, after they selected who was going through the process after the interviews and background checks, uh, they had to send us to uh, a, a police academy that was uh, specifically for auxiliary officers that were going to go uh, join the SWAT team. And then after that, we were then sent to a SWAT medic school and then a SWAT school itself. And just so our viewers get a good idea, how many hours was that auxiliary academy? I think it was around three or four hundred. Right. I'm not, I can't remember the exact number. I think number. you're right. I think yeah. it's around 400 hours, mm -hmm. the Auxiliary Academy. So you guys attended 400 hours of training, police officer training, uh, and you guys did this uh, on your own and of your, uh, own, your, your choosing. That's right. So it was, uh, it was still Monday through Friday, uh, 8 to 5 every day. Um, and we went through all the uh, physical portions that a, a normal law enforcement officer would go through. And then the, the only difference was that the book work was oriented towards m more what we would be seeing uh, on the SWAT team as opposed to on the road or something. That's fantastic. And how long have you been a, a SWAT medic now? Uh, we've been training with the team for three years. Uh, two years ago, I think this November, December was when we were deputized. So our viewers understand what your job on the SWAT team is. Tell them a little bit um, more about what your role as a medic is, what that entails, what you would do in a situation. So uh, they, they train us on everything here, uh, just in case anything happens. Um, but as far as our role goes, uh, they, they take each medic uh, goes on a team with a group of uh, SWAT um, operators. And uh, our role is basically just to be a paramedic, just like we are with the fire department. If, if anyone gets hurt, anyone on the team or any, anyone that we encounter, uh, our job is to provide a first line treatment so that they can get treatment immediately as opposed to later on when the scene is safe and we get everyone outside. They were to to be shot or injured, you're right there with uh, a medical kit able to take action um, and, and save their lives basically right there. Absolutely, we all have, uh, each medic has uh, not only uh, medical gear on them, but we also have a backpack with uh, all, most of our medical supplies that we would carry on a rescue truck. So as far oriented towards trauma uh, and so that we can provide immediate treatment, uh, there's no delay at all. And you, you guys are wearing the same gear as the SWAT team, vest, helmets, as well as uh, the same sidearms and that you can actually defend and protect yourself if the need arises and, and assist uh, if, if a deadly force situation was to arise as well. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Yes, sir. So, Lieutenant, if you're working a shift and you're, you're on shift at a fire station, how does it work to be a SWAT medic if there was a SWAT call out? How does that uh, process work? So right now the way it works is um, if we're working our normal shift, uh, that's when whoever's working the shift that day is on the uh, phone list for a call out. Uh, when the call out comes in, they'll contact, contact us at the station. Um, and then we will, if we're not on a call, we'll drop what we're doing. We report directly to wherever we're supposed to go and go from there. So you guys carry your gear with you to work every day. You have all your SWAT gear with you at all times, uh, basically when you're working and not working. Is that correct? That's correct. It's with us uh, in our vehicle at all times. Um, and, and so that way we can respond at any time that we're called. And you guys are also uh, at training every month. And we're going to talk more about training later in the show. But you guys train um, as a regular member of the SWAT team as well. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Well, this is a great partnership between the St. Louis County Fire District and the St. Louis County Sheriff's Office. And I thank you for being here. Thank you for your service uh, to our country. And thank you for what you're doing uh, as a SWAT medic uh, with our SWAT team. Well, thank you. When we return, we'll be with Deputy Nate Stubley, who is one of our assistant team leaders. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Combat shield, move! Run! Welcome back. We're joined by Deputy Nate Stubley, who is a member of our SWAT team. Welcome, Nate. Thanks for having me. 
Tell us a little bit about your role on the SWAT team and how long you've been a member of the Sheriff's Office SWAT team. So I came to the team in 2013 when I came to this agency. And uh, eventually, this past year, they brought me to the rank of uh, assistant team leader. So it's nice now to kind of have somewhat of a leadership role here on the team and uh, it couldn't be a better group of guys to work with. Well, congratulations on becoming an assistant team leader. Thank you. What I really want to talk about today is the training aspect uh, for the SWAT team. So tell our viewers a little bit about what kind of training you guys do and how often do you train? Well, every month we'll train twice. Those are eight hour training days and training generally will encompass, well, it starts off with a, a physical training session. And we do that to maintain a certain standard, a physical standard. It's also good for the team building aspect because these are group workout sessions that start at the very beginning of the day. So as soon as we finish there, we'll transition into, uh, it could be scenario based training, it could be uh, firearms based training. We try to touch on everything as often as possible. Um, also we have a plethora of different pieces of equipment that help us accomplish whatever mission it is that you know, we need to go out and address, whether it's a barricaded subject or um, hostage rescue, etc. Now is it true that, um, I know you have to go through a rigorous physical fitness test to be on the team, but is it true that you guys maintain that, have to maintain that level of fitness, and you do that fitness test as well, like twice a year as part of your training? Yeah, that's 100% accurate. Yeah. Okay. So you know, our fitness level is assessed, as you said, uh, a couple times a year, and uh, it's necessary to keep everyone on par as far, it's a, obviously it's a demanding position physically. Um, and you know, the mental aspect comes into play as well because the stronger you are physically, we feel that it makes you mentally stronger, which is, you know, obviously it helps out quite a bit. So those monthly trainings that you do, you said twice a month. Right. And uh, you guys predetermine what type of training you're gonna do and that could be done here at the range uh, or at another location. Yep. Who typically leads those trainings and um, do they last all day or they, how, how does that work? So the trainings typically, training sessions are typically, will go off of a curriculum of sorts. And like I said earlier, they could be anywhere from, uh, you know, we'll be off site in some kind of a facility. Um, we've been you know, using different buildings to give our, our team members a variety of scenarios to, to kind of get acclimated to okay. any, any number of scenarios they could encounter during a live operation. Uh, additionally, here at the range, we'll, you know, we'll do scenario training with not only structures that we have here at our, at our facility, but we'll use uh, a variety of the tools that we have at our disposal as well. Uh, again, there'll be tactical shooting involved, um, diversionary devices, um, you know, you know, gas, wh whatever we need to kind of go into to touch on for that, that training session. How many different weapon systems um, do you have to maintain proficiency with? Well, there's a variety of different firearms that we use to include uh, the M4 rifles, submachine guns, obviously our pistols, um, shotguns. Uh, we have simunitions and obviously less lethal. Um, we like to, obviously, it's necessary on SWAT to be able to escalate or de-escalate depending on what the circumstances dictate. So, so yeah. every team member has to maintain their proficiency and training with all of those different weapon systems uh, as well throughout the years. Absolutely, correct? yeah. Wow. So in addition to your monthly trainings, um, we're here today at the Sergeant Gary Morales Training Complex where the SWAT team is actually doing your annual training. Right. Uh, tell, tell our viewers a little bit about your annual training. So every year toward the end of the year, we'll do a 40 hour week of, uh, of SWAT training. And that, that week really is comprised of a comprehensive training over, like I said, the duration of the week where we kind of, we, we really get into everything. So we try to, we try to encompass a training in various formats throughout the week. So we'll do shooting on a certain day. We'll try to uh, do scenario based training, uh, work on less lethal, um, so again, tactical shooting. Um, we'll also try to bring other units into the mix as well, because in a larger operation, Obviously, it'll be more than just SWAT that's involved in um, whatever it is, whatever mission it is we need to address. That's very true. Uh, most people don't realize that when SWAT's called out, SWAT's generally not the only 
a specialty team that's called out. We have our hostage negotiations team, our bomb team, we have our command uh, vehicles, our canine group, our aviation group. Um, so during this week, you train with those units as well? Yeah, uh, this week in particular, we'll be training with uh, pretty much all the units you just mentioned, um, uh, specifically canine as well, because we'll, uh, we'll have a scenario-based training later on this week that'll involve uh, tracking and, and movement through a densely wooded area. Why is it so important for the team um, with everything that you've got already to train on, why is it so important for the team to train with these other uh, units as well? Well, you want to have a synergy with them because ultimately, as I said, there are scenarios that could be larger in scope that would involve more than just the assets that SWAT has at their disposal. I mean, we may need okay. or you know, we may need bomb disposal you know, to make things safe before we can make our entry. So, you know, there's a variety of uh, different professions and expertises that involved here. And getting everybody together, training together, uh, helps people to understand how other units work that they may not train with. Right. I understand that you guys also send your team members away to advanced training as well throughout the year. Just real quickly, tell our viewers about that training, what it might entail. So in addition to the SWAT training that we have here on site, we'll send uh, the newer SWAT members to uh, a SWAT school, um, usually it's a Florida SWAT Association school that is somewhere else in the state. Um, so they'll kind of, they'll get really a full week of very intensive structured SWAT uh, related uh, instruction throughout the course of a week to become proficient, bring those tools back to the team. And uh, then as they progress in their careers and they, they move up through the ranks, uh, they may attend SWAT leadership schools to become team leaders or assistant team leaders. They may become uh, more adept at uh, the different uh, weapons or vehicles that we have, like less lethal weapons, for instance. Uh, they're, they're, we have various members who have been to gas munitions school and uh, everything from driving the MRAP through uh, all the other assortment of uh, pieces of equipment that we have. Well, thank you, Nate. And, uh... I think it's evident and obvious that there is a lot of training that goes on uh, with the SWAT team. And uh, we thank you for what you do for the Sheriff's Office. Don't go away. We'll be right back. For more information about any of the programs we discussed today, please visit stlucysheriff.com or follow us on social media. So on behalf of Sheriff Kim Mascara and the professionals who proudly serve the citizens of St. Lucie County, we'll see you next time. Take care.